Hello, everyone, and welcome to end-to-end -end functional and visual testing for the web with Cypress.io and Percy.io. With me is Mike Fotinakis, co-founder and CEO of Percy.io, and I'm your host, Gleb Bakhmutov. And Mike, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, hi, everybody. Great to be here. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Percy, and I'll we'll tell you a lot about what Percy does. We'll do some demos here. Hopefully, all the demos are working well and the internet's working well today. Uh, but we'll we'll wing it no matter what. Uh, but yeah, excited to be here and talk with you about visual testing and about Cypress and end-to-end -end testing. Absolutely, and you can follow Mike at Mike Fotinakis on Twitter. Um, I'm Gleb Bakhmutov. I'm VP of Engineering at Cypress.io. I've been with Cypress for two years. You can follow me at Bakhmutov on Twitter. Uh, Cypress.io is fast and easy and reliable testing for anything that runs in a browser. And in this webinar, we're going to look at functional testing with Cypress, and then we'll look at visual testing and how Cypress and Percy can actually work together. We'll see a, a live demo. Then I hope Mike in, kind of explains how Percy works under the hood and gives all the trade secrets away. We'll Absolutely. finish with uh, <laughs> tips and tricks and uh, questions and answers. When you're watching the Zoom webinar, down at the bottom you have Q&A widget. So feel free to open questions or ask questions throughout the webinar and we'll answer them at the end of the webinar. After the webinar, uh, probably tomorrow, we'll email everyone who has registered and we'll email a link to the video and link to the slides and a short online survey about the webinar. And if you complete the survey, we'll send you a Cypress T-shirt, which is a hot, hot commodity and will be <laughs> a priceless artifact many years from now. And we might, uh, we might add on a Percy T-shirt to that as well. Is the Percy logo a hedgehog or a porcupine, Mike? That's the first question. Yeah, oh, wow, that's a really good question. Yeah, I've, I've given up trying to, to distinguish between the two. We call it a hedgepine now. Uh, <laughs> technically, it is Percy the perceptual porcupine. A porcupine. Maybe a one lucky winner will get a real life porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely send some swag your way. Okay, so let's uh, start testing. So let's say we have a web application. And I have a web application running locally right here, and it's an app that allows you to order pizza online. So I entered my delivery information, and then I go down here, and I can pick up a few topics. Uh, Mike, what do you like on your pizza? Let's do some anchovies. Anchovies. <laughs> some um, basil, first one. Basil. Chilies. Just make a really oh, weird yeah. pizza here. <laughs> Definitely some olives. Olives. Excellent, that looks delicious. Uh, as you can see, you know, we got the toppings drawn on a pizza, which is kind of nice. We have a total order. Uh, I, I don't think we can afford anchovies, so <laughs> we're gonna drop them. And if everything is correctly, and we have all the delivery information and toppings, I can place the order. The app is not a real application, so it's kind of yummy, but unfortunately we cannot eat this pizza. But the order has been placed we can see an alert. So this application is available at Cypress or GitHub, but it's a fork from uh, Todd Motto's Angular Pizza Creator app. The interesting thing about today's webinar is that we don't concern ourselves with like what framework this was written in. I didn't write this web application. Mike did not write this application. We don't care about implementation details. What we do care is that this application works. And First, we want to look at functional tests. Can I actually order a pizza through this application? Can it place for order? And Mike will show us how to do visual testing. And for us, like the shortest definition of visual testing is, does application look right? Yeah. When I, when it works is, the right? Pizza, is the pizza correct? <laughs> is the pizza yeah. correct? Yeah. <laughs> is my anchovy looking like fish, right? Yeah. Um, so for functional tests, we can start with a user story that kind of corresponds to a user using the app. We want to open localhost 3000 in our browser. We want to enter the deliver information, select toppings, and click place order. And the confirmation pop-up should actually be shown. I will use Cypress, not surprisingly. Cypress is a MIT license and PM package. I will install it with npm install Cypress. And it downloads a binary appropriate for operating system. And it's an MIT license, completely open source test runner. And you can find more information uh, at these links. 
But instead of kind of walking through screenshots, why don't I show the test right here? So I have my first test and I will increase the font maybe a little bit so that people can see it better. Before each test, we want to open the URL. And I put my URL into cypress.json file. So we'll just visit the root path. And my test is called orders custom pizza. And first I have to find each input box and type my delivery information. After I typed, I, I checked that the button is still disabled. I type the rest of deliver information. I check that submit button is still disabled because I haven't actually picked the toppings. And I find the widget box for each topping and I click on it because it's a button. And I confirm that the total price of my pizza is what I expect it to be. And then I can stop, you know, Windows alert, click submit button. And I can confirm that the alert actually pops up. So I have my Cypress test runner open right here. And I will click order spec. And this is Cypress running this test live. As you can see, it opened localhost 3000. And it followed all the steps from my test one to one. And it entered the delivery information, picked a couple of toppings, basil, mozzarella, onion, pepperoni, and confirmed that the total was $12.75. And at the end, it even confirmed that uh, console alert, uh, window alert was really cold. So I'm really happy. I'm running this test. I can run it on my uh, CI and so, so on. But the test kind of looks a little bit more complicated than it should be. So we can simplify it a lot. And we have this concept of custom commands in Cypress. For example, when I enter something in the form control, this, guy, this doesn't look very readable. So instead of this piece of code, I can define a custom command using Cypress commands add. And then the name of a command I want to add. And here I can just put other Cypress commands, like find the input box and type the text. And so now instead of this line above, I can use Cy enter form, which is a custom command that we just written. And I can say, whenever you see name, input box, just type job. So that's one Cypress command. And so instead of typing deliver information in this long block of code, I can define another custom command that will just type, you know, Joe, email, address, postcode, and the form. And so my test here, and let me switch back to what I call dry spec, becomes a lot more readable. I will still, I'll still check that my submit button is disabled, but then I'll just enter deliver information with a single custom command. I can also pick my toppings with a single custom command. And by the way, all the custom commands go into Cypress support index file. Here's my command for entering a single input form value. Here's my custom command for entering the whole deliver information. And here's my custom command for picking as many toppings as I want. So my test, after it uses the custom commands, looks exactly the same. And it does run exactly the same. So I can close this test, click on dry spec, and it should function exactly the same way. Great. This is a great looking pizza. And I can write as many functional tests as I want. I can test that I'm ordering the pizza correctly. I can test the edge cases, for example, if there is no delivery information or the email is mismatched, it should display a warning. I can verify that my web application, if it's connected to the API, actually makes a request with an order to the server. I can reach inside my application state and verify that, like let's say, Redux store or whatever application details are there are actually set correctly. I can do all of that. But here's the thing I cannot easily do for my functional test. What if someone goes and accidentally changes the style file and changes the pizza crust color from nice, you know, yellowish to this nasty green? Mike, do you like green crust pizza? <laughs> uh, green eggs and ham? Maybe, but no. <laughs> Maybe. So 
Can we catch things like that, Mike? Yeah, so that's, that's exactly what we do at Percy, right? Um, this is where visual testing really comes into play and, and takes over. And first, I want to kind of give an example of some ways that I've seen people try to solve this problem before and, and ways that I've tried to solve it before, too, um, by extending the, the functional test suite and make it do uh, accomplish. So my, I'm, I'm a very heavy testing advocate. Like I, I love TDD and I actually love like creating pretty thorough test suites. I've become a little uh, looser about it over time where I'm like, oh, let's not write that test. That's okay. You know, sometimes it, it, you, you got to spend your effort where you really want to make sure your critical paths are really tested really well. But I've seen teams uh, go down the path of, okay, well, that one time that image broke. So let's write a really specific regression test for that color on that, that specific image, right? Mm -hmm. And this can really snowball into becoming a very complex and fragile testing culture where you, you're kind of, people are just copying and pasting these really fragile tests and they're not really following the best practices. So you guys have actually have a lot of good info on the Cypress uh, suite about uh, docs about best practices around how to write end end tests and what you should do, what you shouldn't do, things like the custom commands too about how to dry them up and make sure they're really re reusable. Um, but I've seen, I've seen things get really, really bad. So first, first let me show you like an example of, of what not to do. Um, oh so, so, so this is an example actually from a real application. I've sort of an anonymized the code base, so it, you can't really tell, but uh, what it is, is, is this is what the test ended up looking like for, for what people were trying to do when they adopted this sort of uh, testing culture to, to really write these kind of fragile, fragile visual tests. So you'll see like up here at the top, we expect that this element, uh, this is not a Cypress test, by the way, this is just sort of an, a general uh, mm -hmm. end, end test, uh, that, this, that this thing does not have the class post pinned. And then that this, uh, that this action element does not exist on the page or that it does not have the CSS property display none. And this is a, this, you might be able to do some things here, but you're gonna start shooting yourself in the foot pretty quickly, right? Because what, if you're trying to test for things that don't exist on the page, yeah. it's kind of infinite, right? You could test that everything is not on the page. And so where are you supposed to stop? Um, how are you supposed to narrow this down? And <laughs> what happens when you wanna refactor this and rename an element or rename how the, the components are composed together? So. So this is, um, if, you're, if you're used to like classic regression testing and, and you find a bug, you're like, okay, I wanna write a test for this. I'm gonna get this into our test suite so it doesn't come back. That's a really hard thing to do with visual uh, features because they're just visual. You know, you're just used to looking at them and reviewing them. And uh, we find that most software engineering teams are still doing that with manual QA, right? We just sort right. of, even if we have these, all this nice automation around the other places, you move a CSS file, you're still gonna have to go look at it, right? So, so yeah, that's where, that's where visual testing in Percy kind of takes over. And what we try to do is really automate the process of detecting and, and reviewing your visual UI changes uh, and help you know if your pizza's actually turned from yellow to green and, and you didn't know it, right? So this can be um, really good for just gaining confidence in, in every visual change at every step along the way. Um, specifically with Percy, we try to make sure that this is a continuous part of your process. It's actually... Uh, on every commit as part of your normal like code review and 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 uh, development workflow, not some sort of QA step that's saved till later or done on a you know six week release cycle. Same kind of thing with Cypress, right? Where you you spend a lot of effort trying to make Cypress really performant so that we can run them all the time, you know, and and really get these into uh, to be part of our continuous deployment pipelines. And Mike, can I interrupt you for a second? And this. Yeah. Like our like little pizza ordering app was really simplistic. It had only one screen. Right, but in a real application, you have hundreds of workflows, hundreds right. of screens, and manually reviewing them, like at the end of each sprint, just to make sure you didn't like accidentally introduce changes. It would be impossible. Yeah, you can't with a big application. You just can't physically get through all of the all the pages, and then also you're relying on humans to remember what was there before right. and is it supposed to look correct now, which is just really error prone and, and really manual. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of automation we could bake into that and. I think the purpose of all of these kinds of tools too is to like automate away the parts that we can actually automate and leave to us the more valuable parts where we're actually asking like, are these things correct? Is this actually the feature we want to launch to our users? Is this actually mm -hmm. what it's supposed to look like and what we, what represents our brand correctly? Those kinds of things, the higher value stuff, right. not, not the, the, we can automate away this kind of like manual testing over and over and over that we're doing, you know, constantly. 
And then, and then, yeah, a big piece of this too is obviously like just catching visual bugs. You know, if something, the text is flown outside of the box and things or styles are missing or whatever, you got to be able to see that across all the different states of your application really quickly. Um, so even though a functional test, you might have a functional test for a page, if, um, if you've lost all the styles for the page and it's just Times New Roman and yeah. up in the top left corner, the, the yeah. functional test might actually still pass. Um, so visual testing really, really tries to make sure that that stuff is visible yeah. to you. And Mike, can I also like kind of pinpoint that it's visual regression. You need a baseline that's good, right? But you actually looked at, and then you automate catching any regressions, like any changes from baseline, right? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely, yep. So, so yeah, the core component of visual testing is these things called visual diffs, um, which you all may, may be familiar with or may have, have different names for. They're called different things across the industry. Some people will call them perceptual diffs or CSS diff, diffs or CSS testing, that kind of thing. Um, I think everything is kind of centralizing around visual diffs. And what, what does that mean? Um, so basically this is, is given two images, what is the difference between these two images? And, and I could tell you as a human looking at these, you know, what the differences are, but how is a computer supposed to do that? So what we do is actually just create this like visual comparison between these two images and highlight all the pixels between them that have changed. So this is a very simple example where the pixels, you know, you can see that the drop down has changed, but you can also kind of tell by looking at this visual diff that the drop shadow has, has changed, so the drop shadow is extended. Um, so you can kind of learn how to like read these visual diffs over time and they're kind of just highlighting the area that you should be paying attention to. That's right. So we found that visual testing is really great for uh, lots of different cases. You can test your full app web applications. You can test components, just take all of your components and push them up to Percy. And then you'll, you can see if you've changed a style that affects multiple of them or, or one of them, how, how is your, your style guide and your component library sort of advancing over time. And then also with like, Cypress and other end-to-end -end testing suites, just being able to integrate into those and, and static sites, basically anything that's on the web, uh, we think visual testing can apply for. So I just wanted to throw up a couple of really quick use cases of some, some cool use cases for visual testing. Obviously just catching visual aggressions, catching visual bugs before they actually get out to your users, not, not after. Um, being able to write smaller and more effective tests. So I actually think with your, your dry uh, example, it actually kind of helps that even more, right? Because instead of, if you get really fearful about, oh, I, we added a green pizza once, let's add another test that like checks the color of that thing mm -hmm. is not green or something. You can actually just adopt a visual review workflow and then your test can get even more effective and even more uh, you know, efficient at how you're writing them. Um, a big fear of software engineers just in general is deleting CSS. Like we all, we all are scared yeah. of it. Uh, I never want to touch a CSS file that you know we've, we've had around for a long time because you just don't know where in your application you're going to break if you if you remove stuff. So being able to do that stuff without fear is actually a really big benefit of having this kind of coverage. Um, just being able to know that your dependency upgrades aren't breaking things in your front end that you don't expect them. Uh, Cypress catches the functional side of that kind of thing, and then Percy's going to catch the visual side of those kinds of dependency upgrades. And then just, yeah, being able to test visualizations, which are actually a really hard thing to test with, uh, with unit testing. You can kind of test the inputs and outputs, but it's really, right. really what you care about in the end there is actually testing the visualization itself. So, and yeah, just being able to, I think both of both Cypress and Percy really help you reach a state of continuous deployment and being able to get there more safely um, and actually have the, this automation in place. So yeah, not without its challenges. Uh, Visual testing is, you know, you, when you go from, we're just testing the, the units of our systems and the end-to-end -end integrations of our systems to now we're testing the pixels of our systems. There's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that comes up. Uh, one of them is that it's just hard to actually get applications into these complex states. Like, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's easy to visit index.html, but it's not easy to visit the billing page for uh, this kind of subscriber, right. or, you know, with the modal that's come up when they're mm -hmm. updating their credit card or whatever. That's, that's a much more complex thing to test. Cypress is, enables you to just do that really easily. Um, and then another challenge of visual testing is just performance. Um, load, browsers are really complex now, right? There's, there's right. more source, source code in Chrome than there is in the Linux kernel nowadays. It's a huge application. Browsers are really complicated. So, having them load and, and get to these uh, get get to the state that you need and being able to take full lossless PNG screenshots of them in a deterministic environment is something that really uh, is, is a challenge in visual testing. And then being able to know also that you're rendering them consistently, that you're right. actually getting the right output out of it and that you're not getting false positives is a big challenge of, of visual testing. 
And then just the, the actual workflow pieces, which I actually think are pretty critical to this. You don't want to be, you know, versioning these images into your Git repository, having to manually manage, like, what is the baseline? When is our app changed? Because you're just adding too many features. You're changing things all the time. You don't want to have these, any burdensome processes in the way. So we really I, think that, yeah, go ahead. I, uh, can I like kind of stress that point is that it's not even a single browser. It might, might be multiple browsers, hundreds of screenshots, and several resolutions. Yeah. So you, you're talking like you know, gigabytes of images in your repository, which doesn't like really scale. Yeah, absolutely. I was just at, a, at the uh, launch Darkly's first conference yesterday called Trajectory Conf, and they do feature flagging. So if you've adopted feature flags in your workflow, um, they're amazing for launching small pieces to your users more quickly, but they make testing way harder, right? Because you have mm -hmm. like so many more combinations and combos of tests that you need to be able to, to get into. So actually being able to have this kind of automation in that world makes these, the, the workflows a lot, a lot easier because you can actually get coverage of those things automatically. So yeah, I think that's a, one of the big challenges there is just like how, just the basics of how are you setting the baselines? How are you approving things? Um, you know, how are you working through these, these, uh, the baseline of, of these changes over time? Cool. Um, so yeah, so let's talk a little bit about Percy. And then we'll, we'll jump into a demo here in a minute too. So Percy is a visual testing and review platform. So we try to do all of this automatically for you and address this. And Cypress is one of our best integrations. Uh, you can easily extend your end-to-end -end, uh, testing suite with, uh, with Percy and, and on top of your Cypress testing suite that you're already probably writing. So um, I'll just run through quickly how you would set up the Percy Cypress NPM package. So what we do first is you just npm install Percy Cypress. Then you import the Percy Cypress custom command and you can just throw this at the top of the support index file that Glove was telling you about. And this will just uh, basically add the, the Cypress command add yeah. to uh, for the Percy snapshot command. And then you can layer in these cy.percy snapshot commands into your test suite. Um, and we'll talk about like the format of those later, but basically you can kind of choose where do you want visual coverage in your application? Like, where do you want to, you know, I have Cypress, so I've got this thing, it's, I've gotten the page into the state and I've checked all the functionality. Now let's take that and snapshot it and send it up to Percy for visual testing. So it's just a single line that you can add in all the places you want visual coverage. So are we talking here hours to install and start using Percy with Cypress or seconds? I mean, it be minutes, I'm going to say minutes. minutes. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you want me to show this in action? Absolutely, let's do it. So I did install Percy Snapshot uh, plugin and I did import Percy custom commands like right next to my commands that I've just written. And I did write a visual test. So basically I, I, I took the same test and right at the start when I just loaded the app, I'm taking a snapshot of an empty pizza. And I think it's good, right? Before we do anything, before we enter delivery information, before we pick toppings, it's nice to, to have empty pizzas shot. Then I did my normal functional stuff. I confirm that the screen refreshes. And then I take snapshot and I give it a name of all the toppings. So pepperoni, chili, onion. So let's see how it runs locally, right? So I'm clicking on visual spec and it does its thing. And I noticed that there are a couple of extra log messages, Mike, right? Yeah. So Percy agent is not running, health check. And I think it's, these are the places where I'm taking Percy snapshot, mm -hmm. right? So what's going on? Yeah, so this is just in the local setup. Uh, Percy is usually integrated into like a CI environment, which we'll, we'll go into here in a second. This is, um, you, you can use this to get set up with Percy and get your snapshots running, make sure that you're capturing them in the right states. So you can actually use Percy locally if you just expose the token that lets you talk to the API, this would run as if it was running in CI. Mm -hmm. But by default, we skip visual testing when you're just doing things locally. So locally, it doesn't affect my, the speed of a test at all. It, it just extra just commands. Yeah, just excellent, excellent. Yep. And so let's look at the slides. So I would really want to use it on CI. And if I understand correctly, I need Percy token, mm -hmm. right? Where can I get one? Uh, every project has a Percy token, so you can just grab that and, and put it into your CI environment variables. Excellent. And also, uh, the instructions tell me that instead of my typical Cypress run command that I run on CI, I would do Percy exact and then Cypress run. 
So mm -hmm. instead of Cypress running by itself, Percy will start it. That's mm -hmm. correct, right? Yeah, that's right. And that's all I have done on our CI. And we already set up you know, the project. It's a public project. You can take a look at that. It's, you can see all the divs yourself. We did connect it to you know, the GitHub repository, right? So we linked Percy bot to a GitHub repository. And I did add Percy snapshot command. So Mike, can you kind of explain what's the workflow now? Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be your normal day-to-day -day development workflow. Make a pull request with some sort of change. You review the pull request, and then you merge it when you're ready. Um, Excellent. Yeah, I, I, I do have a pull request with visual changes right here. So in this pull request, I did go and I did change my pizza from, <laughs> from a nice yellow color to kind of lime green. And here's what I see here now. I see my functional test on, on CI passed, right, the green mark, but I see this check that appeared after the test completed. Um, and if I look at details, right, Percy says two visual changes need review, I can see this screen. Mike, can you explain what's going on here? Yeah, absolutely. So, so right from GitHub, you can jump to Percy and we will show you a side-by-side -side comparison of exactly what has changed visually in your site in this PR. Like what, mm -hmm. what, are, the, what are the visual changes that we're about to merge into master? Um, so I can see on the left here, this is what's in master. This is the baseline. And then on the right, this is the visual diff. So, so all the red pixels you see are the pixels that have changed between these two states. And I can just click that diff here on the right to toggle it on and off and sort of look back and forth and say, oh, great. Okay, well, I didn't mean to change that pizza color from, uh, from you know, cheese to green. Or maybe I did. Maybe there's some, some piece of this that I actually did mean to. And we present all these next to each other. You can see all the different complex states of your application and components. And uh, yeah, you can just really quickly do a visual review and, and without having to pull down a local branch or set up a staging server or go to some review app somewhere, you can just go right from your pull request as you're doing the code review to, hey, what are the visual changes in Percy that Percy's telling me we're about to launch? And mm -hmm. I can review them there. And if there's something wrong, you can yeah. go back, push another commit and see it in the next commit. The commit status will get updated. And then you can also approve it there in the top right and, and work through the, the workflow when you're ready. I like this green pizza. You know, it's growing on me. But before I approve this, uh, what's happening here? I see Chrome and I see Firefox. Did Cypress finally release Firefox support or what's going on? <laughs> that was a it, it, good lead, good lead. Um, so no, so this is in Percy, right? So this is where we're rendering it across multiple browsers, doing cross-browser visual testing. And we can also show you this on, uh, on mobile. I don't actually think that this particular site is mobile compatible, but you can Not see really. it like like what this page would look like in a responsive width, and you can still you know, review it and click the, and toggle the diffs. You can go between the different responsive widths. And then you can also see the very subtle sort of rendering differences that are actually happening here between mm -hmm. the different browsers. So there's different padding changes, different borders on the inputs and those kinds of things. So you, really you don't have to you know, go boot this up in all the different browsers, get into the right states, uh, open it up in different responsive widths and check them all visually. We can do that for you and, and make sure that that's sort of part of the automation. Excellent. So my workflow now is, not, is that not only for pull requests, the functional tasks have to pass, but also if there are visual changes, go and review them on a you know, Percy dashboard where everything is optimized for this workflow review. Yep. And Absolutely. okay, so what happens when I approve all? I like this. So all changes approved. Yep. So that goes back and sets the status in uh, GitHub to green and you've done your first visual review, right? Excellent, excellent. And you can do this so. continuously on every single PR and every single commit, right? Percy's really built to, to sort of scale and, and do this at scale. Right, and once the pull request is merged, uh, usually ma master branch is auto approved, right? So all the changes become the new baselines. Mm -hmm. Yep, we, by default, we assume that your master de branch is deployable, like you're doing some sort of pull request or merge request to workflow, you're doing some, some code review and visual review there, and when things get into master, that is automatically the new baseline for, uh, for Percy. So then you don't have to, I have to manually say, these are the, these are the images that we All will right. treat as the, the master baseline. We'll just automatically keep that up to date because hopefully you're launching stuff in master really quickly and, and it's you know, continuously advancing. And if you use like multiple 
branches like you have development branch and you do pull requests again and then you have a master you also review development to master to make sure there are no visual regressions reaching productions and things like that so mm -hmm. it, it really is git flow right? yep absolutely we try to support all the weird edge cases of git flows <laughs> like sub feature branches yeah. and uh and if you have if your if your master branch is not called master if it's called something else you can configure that yep uh, and I think you can see, you know, the state of person on dashboard, like auto approved on master, no changes after a couple of commits. Uh, do I have anything? Oh, unreviewed, right? So something changed, but I didn't even look at those. So mm -hmm. it becomes like a snapshot of, of all visual changes on or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So we kind of covered, uh, you know, the bulk of functional testing and did a demo. But now it's time for really interesting stuff, right? How Percy actually works under the hood. And uh, Mike, take it away. Yeah, so at a very high level, there's kind of three steps. You integrate Percy, one of our SDKs, into your test suites, or um, you can build a small script that just runs just visual tests on their own. Then we run and render and compare these images across all the different browsers and the screens and, and, and show you the, the highlighting the, the visual diffs. And then you can do a visual review. So you can review and approve these, these visual changes uh, that are about to go out to production. So just really quick, we sort of think of them in three steps, like integrate, run, and then review. Mm -hmm. So then di let's like dive deep into the Percy machine really quickly and, and talk a little bit about how, how it actually works under the hood. Um, so yeah, you've got this, this Cypress Percy snapshot line uh, and you're capturing some, some state. So what's actually happening there? So I've got the, um, the Cypress runner running and, and Percy agents, the, the process is, is just wrapping that. It basically runs the Cypress runner as you would normally. It passes everything through and it, and it waits for the Cypress runner to, to close. And so we can actually know when the build sort of starts and, and ends. And then while that agent process is running, Cypress can send the snapshots to Percy agent, which is just a, an NPM package that's, that's running on your, um, in your CI environment. And Percy Agent is doing a bunch of complicated stuff that we actually hide from you. It's, it's discovering all the assets of the pages that we need in order to be able to render these screenshots. Um, it's collecting metadata from the CI environment, like is this a pull request? You know, what branch is this thing on? And then Percy Agents is actually the thing that's actually talking to the Percy API. So mm -hmm. then Percy Agent sends up these snapshots to the, uh, the Percy API, and we do a bunch of other things there where we'll you know, talk to the source code integration and, and kick things over to GitHub, et cetera. Um, so what I want to talk about is like, what's happening on this line? You know, what is actually getting sent up here from Percy Agent to Percy? And you might expect that there are images. The image is that. Here, right? Yeah, that's the, that's the default assumption is, oh, yeah. you're just sending up images. Um, but that would actually come along with all of the challenges and the problems that we talked about earlier. Is if you're actually generating these images in your CI suite or in your, in your test suite here, you could easily add 30 minutes to an hour to your test suite for just a handful, you know, maybe 50 to 100 images, um, which is a really big performance, performance hit. Um, and in addition to that, there's also, if you're taking screenshots in whatever the random Chrome browser version is that you're, you're sitting on in CircleCI or one of the other CI providers, you, uh, you might get a very different screenshot at different versions or potentially on different hardware um, or even under different load conditions. So you can't actually really deterministically render these things when they're actually in, in CI and you can't do it performantly. So what Percy actually does here is something kind of clever. We, we actually send up what are called um, DOM snapshots and, and the assets of your, of your pages up to Percy for rendering. So Cypress has gotten the page into some state, into some UI state. We capture the DOM and serialize it and, and figure out what assets on the pages, what images, what other CSS might we need. We, uh, this is a little in the weeds, but we SHA-256 fingerprint all of those assets and send them up to Percy, which means that we only ever upload anything once. So mm -hmm. if we've ever seen that image before or that CSS file, we won't have to upload it multiple times. So it's, a, it's like a, a strong optimization in that path. Mm -hmm. And then we take these DOM snapshots and we send them up to Percy's custom rendering infrastructure, which reconstructs the state of the page on our side in these different browsers at the different responsive widths, puts all the assets in them, and then takes a, the full page screenshot of them. We do a bunch of other things there like freezing animations and freezing the fonts of the system and, and pinning the browser versions and mm -hmm. all the things that are necessary to make sure that those are as stable and deterministic of rendering as possible. 
And then a really key point here <clears throat> for performance is that we're actually heavily parallelizing those things. Mm -hmm. So you're sending up these DOM snapshots from Percy Agent and from Cypress, which are pretty cheap. They're just like strings and of right. you know the HTML. But then the actual rendering of these things, it has to be parallelized in order to be fast. So we can run hundreds or thousands of these at the same time for a single customer and be opening Chrome and Firefox, you know, thousands of mm -hmm. times over the course of a minute or whatever. And um, and actually rendering all the screenshots out for you. So Percy now renders and opens Chrome and Firefox millions of times a day mm -hmm. uh, at scale in order to, to do this. And, and that, you know, and, that. And that's just rendering. You also have to actually diff them, right? And store the baselines. Yep, absolutely. So then we're, we do these, these visual comparisons as well, mm -hmm. store those all, and then, and then kick back to, to GitHub and others and say, hey, there's a visual review that uh, is ready to go. Well, I, I really love these graphics, right? All the stuff coming in, into that machine and it generates you know, a diff for you. It's really, really Thank you. Yeah, yeah, this is the, what, the little Percy machine, the Percy rendering machine. <laughs> yeah, a little mechanical hedgehog. Uh, so what does the Percy snapshot command do? Yeah, so um, there's, the interface to this is pretty simple. You can, you can send it nothing, which it'll just actually grab the name of the Cypress test suite that you're in. So if you've named something, you know, homepage and with dropdown, it'll just grab that name and, and use that as the name. Mm -hmm. But this is, the, this is the thing that sort of uniquely identifies that UI state of what we're going to track over time. So if you've told us this is our homepage with the dropdown clicked, that's the state we're going to track over time. So the, the name is sort of the unique identifier. And then there's some uh, additionally other options here that uh, we can talk about too. So you can set different responsive widths um, per, uh, per snapshot. So if you have a particular page that you care about, um, you know, only on, you care about this page on mobile and desktop, but maybe you don't mm -hmm. care about another set of pages on, you only care about that on desktop. You can sort of configure this on a snapshot by snapshot basis and say, here are the widths that we care about testing for these snapshots. And, and by default, the widths are like desktop and mobile, right? Mobile phone. Mm -hmm. So it, it's nice that you give a configuration object and you can configure more thing like using a Percy YAML file, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. You can change the defaults for what widths will be used, or then you can, on an individual snapshot, you can change you know, what's actually going into them. It's, it's pretty amazing, right? It's a single command, like a couple of minutes to understand how to like, incorporate into your workflow, and it just works. And yep. uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, yeah, um, tips and tricks, right? I think the key to good image comparison is to actually have accurate images, right? So one of the things that you really want to do to, to combine your functional testing with visual testing is to make sure that you snapshot the same state of your you know, page, right? And you, sometimes your page has to update itself. So you should use functional assertion, like you know, yeah. the total pizza price has been updated. Yeah. So you don't, you don't catch it you know, sometimes after it has updated or sometimes before. You really want to assert, my page is stable, now do the snapshot, right? Yeah. And I think that this also speaks to the like efficient test kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the total price of the pizza is pretty important to your yes. application, yeah. right? That's a critical piece. It's, a, it's in the critical path. If the price of your pizza is wrong, that's a, a bad thing for your users. So I would still keep this kind of thing. It, it serves kind of two purposes, right? You're actually mm -hmm. testing the data and it also is Cypress is going to make sure that the page is in that state before it continues. Otherwise, that's, that's an error of the test. Right. So it, it actually helps the snapshot get stable, but also this is like a critical path of a test that you wouldn't want to get rid of in any case. Exactly. And think about all your loading indicators. You want to probably snapshot page either while it's displaying or while it's gone, but not sometimes before it's gone, sometimes it's not. So it's easy to do with functional assertion and then purse a snapshot. Mm -hmm. uh, a big thing are dynamic pieces of data like your, your date and time, right? With Cypress, you can freeze your clock to particular time timestamp and then take a snapshot. Uh, if you have dynamic data that can arrive from the API, from the server, well, with Cypress, you can control the network, stop it, and make sure you get the same data leading to the same DOM you know, and consistent snapshot. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've been uh, plugging Percy into our dashboard test, our Cypress dashboard test, and we had to do all those things, right? All the random avatars had to be consistently done uh, the clock had to be consistent. All the little loading indicators and pop-up messages had to be waited on. 
before mm -hmm. we took first snapshot, but it's doable. Yeah. Yeah, once you start doing, you know, testing the pixels of your site, there's more like test practices you have to, to put into place. But we usually find like freezing time and making data a little bit more stable can go most of the way, almost all the, the entire way to, to making your, your visual test very stable. Right. We have a couple of other things um, that I wanted to mention too, that we have a thing called Percy specific CSS that allows mm -hmm. you to ignore regions or really like customize how Percy is actually rendering things in our rendering infrastructure in the first place. Um, and then also if you're using something like um, the Faker JS uh, mm -hmm. library, you can actually seed Faker. So right. you can say Faker.seed123, and that will mm -hmm. actually, it'll still create fake data, but it'll be uh, deterministic in how it actually outputs it into your tests. So then right. you can basically stabilize all of your, your data pretty quickly like that. I have to say that trying to make your test deterministic pays off for visual and functional tests, right? Because then you can write exactly the same assertion and it will consistently pass, and you can assert everything about your data or your state of your app in both cases. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mike, I want to throw like an edge case at you, right? So uh, in my <laughs> tests, I have, let's see, uh, let me switch to a different branch. It's called long drop. And in a long drop, if I look at my application running, where is it right here? So what has changed here? I increase the duration of CSS animation. So every time I click on a topping, instead of 300 milliseconds, it takes a couple of seconds to transition, right? So I made this branch, and I'm sure the visual test will fail, right? So I open a pull request, and ooh, it's interesting that Percy thinks that there are no visual changes. So shall we look at this? Mm -hmm. what, what did it render? Yeah, so, yeah, go ahead. No, no visual changes detected, right? So I understand empty pizza, but how come my toppings are already there in a final CSS state? So what happens? Yeah, so this is part of how we are automatically freezing animations and, and trying to make those stable uh, in the visual tests. Because yeah, if, if you're taking visual diffs of those over and over, you might just get very false positive and flaky visual diffs that, that are just in the middle of the animation frames. Mm -hmm. So we actually do a lot of work to freeze animated GIFs um, and freeze CSS and SVG animations in the, the Percy rendering environment to make sure those things are really stable. And if you use uh, JavaScript animations, then control the JavaScript animation from your functional test mm -hmm. and then take a snapshot. So yeah, absolutely. It, uh, this kind of goes to the point, like, why don't I do image diffing myself? And, and I think, you know, there are plugins where you can compare images, take screenshots, Cypress, take screenshot, you compare it. But I think it's very hard. There are so many edge cases and so many different cases where doing it yourself is actually get stuff really, really quick. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's standard software engineering problem, right? We, we as software engineers just are like, oh, I'll just build it myself. Yeah. It. And, you know, it's the same reason why I wouldn't want to build, rebuild Cypress, right? There's just like a thousand things that you guys have solved over time that uh, I'm glad you have, right? And they're just really hard to do. And you're always adding features and, and adding more things for me. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, we can all build on each other in that way. Excellent, excellent. So, I, I think in conclusion, you know, the functional test and visual test can really complement each other. And Mike, you know, what do visual and functional tests give you? Yeah, so I think the, the summary here for everybody is functional tests are telling you that the application works correctly and visual tests are telling you that your application looks correct. Um, and by these two things combined, you can really have full confidence in, in every change that you're making pretty much automatically, right? You, you're right. getting these, you're running them in CI all the time. You're running them on PRs before your users have ever seen it. You know, you know if things are broken functionally or visually, um, <laughs> and that's a that's a lot of confidence yeah. that you know just a, just a few years ago we wouldn't have actually been able to have in any any software application. Right? I I, I kind of you know think of it myself as like my application doesn't work worse than it worked yesterday, right? right. It's, it's always improving. improving right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that's the end of our presentation. Um, what is the content and the slides are available? We have a blog post on my personal blog and we'll have more blog posts about Cypress and Percy working together on our 
Um, that now, blog post is, is really great, by the way. I highly recommend for everybody watching this to go check out that blog post. It gives you all the technical and nitty gritty of how uh, this stuff has got set up and, and the demo application and everything. It's, it's really great. I appreciate it, Mike. Um, if people want to go and like, see how to integrate Percy and Cypress together, you have excellent documentation on your documentation site. Uh, if people want to just try with Cypress Test Runner, just go to our GitHub repository and don't forget to give it a star. That means a lot. Uh, Mike, I want to thank you, but before you go away, we have a couple of questions and I see them. Uh, and let me bring it to the screen. Uh, I believe most people can see it. Uh, okay, so we have, let's say, 10 questions. And I think the first one is kind of is something maybe you can take. Does Percy work for web application built with other programming languages like PHP, Ruby, and Python? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we try to be a real visual review platform, right, and support all of these different use cases and any technology stack you can bring to us. So we have um, native clients for a lot of different web application frameworks and Ember and Ruby and uh, React and Python and uh, Selenium, those kinds of things. We have support for web components via our storybook integration. We've got um, a, a static site client that actually allows mm -hmm. you to just bring up static sites directly into it. And we actually have some end-to-end -end, uh, SDKs as well for Cypress and you know Selenium and others. So yeah, you can hopefully bring in anything into Percy. And if you can't, then we actually have a build your own SDK kind of path that you can actually talk to Percy agent directly and figure out how to get uh, the sort of low level stuff working. So. Thank you, Mike. Uh, the questions kind of jump, so bear with me. But the second part is that where should people go to find out how to use Percy and Cypress? I think the links are here, right? So mm -hmm. docs.percy.io, I think it's the main link. Yep. Um, what browsers does Percy support? Is it just Chrome and Firefox? And what about other browsers? Yep, right now it's just Chrome and Firefox. And we're working on other browser support over time. We definitely have plans to, to support all the, all the major modern browsers. Um, and then, yeah, for mobile screen sizes, you, it's pretty configurable. You can do uh, up to 10 responsive widths uh, for, mm -hmm. for any of your different like mobile, tablet, desktop sizes that you care about. Uh, I had another question is that if you have uh, images, right, they get sent as part of a snapshot. And what about like canvas element? Is it also mm -hmm. treated as an image? So uh, I, don't, I don't think by default canvas elements get brought up into Percy, but there is a way to serialize canvas elements to an image and yeah, then that yeah. image would get transferred up to Percy. We actually have a script for that. So feel free to, people can reach out to us and support to, to get that. And I actually think that that's something that we'll bake into Percy agent over time to just automatically, you know, serialize a canvas element and, and bring it up. Mm -hmm. So something that most people that want to try things out is Percy free for open source project, right? Or can I try it for free? Things like that. Yeah, this is a great question. Um, we have a free plan. So just get in there and just try it. And then our, our plans start at $29 a month. So hopefully it's pretty accessible to a lot of people. We do have an open source sponsored plan as well. So if you have a, a community driven open source uh, project and you want like a, a buffed version of Percy, uh, you can, you're welcome to contact us and we'll set you up with that. We also have a new, just a couple of weeks ago, we launched a Percy badge icon. You can put on readme's um, so it's pretty, pretty cute. So feel free to throw that on there too. We just put it on our Percy web repo recently. Uh, that's very good. And I have to say for Cypress, for public projects, you can use our dashboard. Uh, we introduced an open source plan where you can use all our dashboard features for free for open source project that's coming really soon. And you can use the test runner by itself mm -hmm. for free for forever. So it's all possible. Uh, what else? Uh, wow, some questions are really... Uh, plans to support Safari. Safari is a huge browser. Uh, does Percy support Safari or at least working on it? Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a good question. Um, we don't right now, but that's in our plans. Um, it's a pretty complex setup to, to be able to do that. Um, and it, actually, the one that we hear the most is Safari mobile, like Safari for iOS. Um, so that, that would probably be the first one that we'll tackle, actually, is trying to get iOS Safari support. Excellent. So it's done. Uh, Bitbucket pipelines, not just GitHub integration. Uh, we support GitHub and GitLab right now. We don't support Bitbucket yet, but it's on our roadmap. Uh, it's unfortunately, it's got bumped to the to the lower on the priority list a couple times, but we are definitely still have it on our list. Okay, and uh, this question, but <laughs> I, I, I recognize Erica's uh, name because she needs Shadow DOM. It's not supported in Cyprus yet. 
Uh, what about Shadow DOM? Um, we have had a lot of conversations about Shadow DOM recently, and I don't actually remember the conclusion for it, so I might have to get back to you on that one. Uh, okay. There's a whole bunch of things with like when you're serializing a DOM structure that uh, things that don't actually get serialized to HTML and Shadow DOM is one of them. Uh, so we uh, we can probably bake in better support for that into Percy Agent over time. But yeah, hit us up with your use case and let us know. A web components, right? Everyone wants yeah. web components with Shadow DOM, but yeah. it's work in progress. Uh, the things that Percy, uh, uh, is there a Percy configuration file that we, we can set Options, I, I believe there is, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, there's a Percy YAML file, there's a doc for it. You can see what um, you can set up like the default responsive widths and those kinds of things. So, uh, visual testing is great. And here's kind of a provocative question there are so many paid tools to accomplish this task, but moving forward, can we see an open source version, whether from Percy or from someone else? So, I mean, we can understand this question in many ways, but uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think it's a, it's a combo, right? It's like there are definitely more and more things we can bring open source and, and get to the local development experience and then mm -hmm. things that make sense as a service uh, that's, you know, parallelized and that you're paying for. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're big open source advocates at Percy. Um, yeah. In addition to the to building a business and building a product that, that people are hopefully happy to pay for because of the value it provides. So, it's a uh, it's pulled back and forth. I think like in the same way that Cypress is is open source, but you also have paid plans and other value that you provide that isn't part of the open source package. Uh, that perceives is a similar thing. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that a service on top of free tool you know, can deliver for you for your organization. Really, it's it's an organizational question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I forgot where the question was, but basically, how can I blank out a piece of a page, right? If I don't want to, maybe it changes a lot, right? So if I don't want right, to be. So uh, in the Percy docs, just look for ignore region. Um, that is, the, that'll show you the docs for Percy specific CSS. And you can just sort of make a selector that selects that piece and display nuns it or, mm -hmm. or blanks it out, whatever you want. You can take full control there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, um, you showed a test for changes. How does the initial state of your screenshot get captured? A test with changes. Oh, um, so the only setup that we did there is we pushed up a, a master. Uh, we, we added Cypress Percy snapshot lines to your right. test suite, and then we pushed it up to master. Uh -huh. So that that set the baseline. Uh, whatever the snapshots were and the initial master push would have set the baseline for those. I think I think that's the answer to that question. Right. It, it gets auto approved. So yeah. that's the initial. Uh, let's take maybe two more questions and then uh, finish. Um, uh, this is interesting, right? So do I understand correctly, Percy actually runs on your side, right? Like you maintain that cloud that renders everything, does this image D thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not on, on, on the customer side. Yeah, that's right. So we run that Percy agent process that we talked about in your CI environment or wherever you're running the, your Cypress testing suite. That'll be running alongside that and capturing snapshots. And then those are sent up to the Percy service for actually rendering and display for the visual review and for notifications to GitHub and other places. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the integration is kind of separated in that way where we capture the screenshots or the, the sorry, the snapshots in uh, your CI environment. And then all the rendering is actually happening on our side for performance and stability. And the follow up question to that, Mike, do you offer on prem version? We don't. We do not right now. Uh, yep, it's a cloud SaaS service. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, limitations. Maybe one more question. Does anything jump at you? Uh, what's well, how about I ask you a question uh, uh, to wrap it up here? So, what's next yeah. for Cypress? Where are you guys going with it? So, we would like to see a close integration, right, between you know plugins like the do visual dipping, for example, with our dashboard. Right now, as you notice, right, even with GitHub pull request flow, you have to jump and look at GitHub status check. A and yet, you know, there is a Percy dashboard. There's also a Cypress dashboard that has like video and test results. It would be nice if we could integrate and provide a full view of here's a functional test, here's where a screenshot was taken, here's Percy, you know, showing a diff if it has changed, right? So kind of have one place you know, stop for all our customers to see what happened during the testing. 
but we, we can discuss it. We'll, we will discuss it later. Cool. I like it. Well, Mike, thank you so much for you know agreeing to take part in this webinar and showing the visual testing with Percy. Again, we'll send the results of this webinar, the video recording, and the link to the slides and the blog and the docs probably tomorrow. And there'll be a short online survey. If you take it, you'll get a Cypress t-shirt and maybe a porcupine. We cannot guarantee that. Well, <laughs> goodbye, everyone. And thank, thank you, you Mike. Thank you, Glad. That was really fun. Thank you all for participating. Thanks for all the great questions and everything. And yeah, feel free to hit us up with any, any feedback and any questions you guys have. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.